Hello everybody, I'm Chris. Welcome to Melchester Model Railway. This channel has just reached over 100 subscribers. It's been running for around about a year and I thought what better way to mark the event than to do my first box opening and review. And as Melchester is a primarily a southern region based layout, I thought what better loco to choose for the occasion than this Kerno Model Rail Centre exclusive. It's their commission of the Bullid 1 Coco 1 prototype diesel locomotive. So let's have a look at this. So here we are then with the Kano Model Rail Centre exclusive Bullied 1 Coco 1 diesel locomotive and this one a gold medal in 2018. So let's open up the box and oh, here's the usual paperwork. Let's have a quick look through this. Um, this looks like the exploded diagram parts. Um, and here we've got a history of the class and some instruction sheets on how to lubricate the motor wheels and some further information. So quite a wealth of extra additional history and information comes with this model. And here's the list of sound functions as I've opted for the sound fitted version. Now, Kerno worked directly with the factory in China to produce this locomotive. They designed all their own tooling um, and worked directly and very closely in the whole of the manufacture process. But there was no third party involvement, say with Backman or Dapol. And here we can see the loco comes in this block of ice packaging and we've got some additional uh, parts here. That is the Bournemouth Bell headboard and here we've got some extra detailing parts bogey weights and screw couplings if you want to fit those so opening up the loco very well protected in this packaging and mm, there's certainly quite a hefty weight to that locomotive that feels like it's going to have some very good adhesive traction power so let's take a closer look at some of the finer detail of this model. Now that the model's out of its box, we can see that this locomotive really does make its presence felt. And that seems to me to be partly down to the beautifully finished livery of BR black with silver lining and silver bogies. And just as on the real locomotives, the bogies were painted silver aluminium to aid the photography process so that everything could be clearly seen. So in four millimeter scale, the bogies in this color really do just emphasize the sheer size and bulk that there is on this one Coco one arrangement. And that's one of the reasons why I like this livery so much. It is available in a later BR Green livery, but you just don't get the, the same appreciation of the size of the bogies when they're in black. And of course, the danger of, the, of having the bogies in this colour is that it could show up the faults mercilessly in the model. But really, we just get the opposite here because the, there's an abundant wealth of rivet detail, which is clearly visible and some great relief on the bogies, including the steps leading up to the cabs, the sandboxes, um, and the springs picked out in black. Here we can see in more detail some of the separately fitted parts, such as the steps, the sandboxes, the speedometer, and note how the sandbox pipes line up nicely with the tread of the wheels. Here you can see the centrally positioned side window, which allows you to see into the engine room. And in fact, we've got a depiction of the engine, which is very nicely done. Even if perhaps it could have been weathered in some way, 
Uh, it does look rather plasticky at the moment, but that's easily remedied yourself with some paint, a bit of further detailing. Uh, this window is often predicted depicted in the down position and I've seen photographs of the engineer actually standing in this little corridor so perhaps it's a little too close to the window but that's a very minor detail we have to remember that this model's concealing a centrally mounted five pole motor with two flywheels so it would be very difficult to come up with a solution that wasn't in some way a minor compromise. Nevertheless, it's nothing really to write home about. Here we can also see the moulded engine room grills and the very nicely and neatly applied Cycling Lion British Rail Crest. In fact, there's such an immense wealth of detail on the side of this model, from the many hundreds of rivets, uh, grills to the engine room, doors and panels. The more you look at it, the more it exudes character. And just look at that little glazed porthole window in the engine room door. Delightful. It's only when we turn to the front of this locomotive that we begin to really appreciate the subtlety of its contours. Something, to my mind, a bit akin to a 1950s refrigerator with its rounded curved ed edges. Um, far from being just an oblong box on wheels. There's some real subtlety going on here and Bulliard designed this locomotive to match the profile of his own coaches. The comparison with a photograph of the real locomotive illustrates just how well and how hard Kernow have worked to get this aspect of their model just spot on. The flushly glazed windows have been captured to perfection, even with their beautifully rounded corners. And there's no sign of any prismatic effect at the edges to detract. Even the handrails aren't just ordinary wire affairs. These are proper flattened handrails with a flat profile and they adhere beautifully to the contours of the body. It's attention to details such as these that really lift this model out of the realms of the ordinary. Turning our attention to the roof, and it's clear that the standout feature here is the fan grill uh, with a depiction of the fan beneath. This is really, really well done. One of the best I've seen on a diesel locomotive. It's probably worth mentioning that the first batch of models delivered to Kerno depicted the locomotive with four smaller circular exhaust ports. The second batch has a slight modification in that we now have two rectangular exhaust ports. So this obviously represents the modifications that must have been made to the real prototype locomotive at some point during their life. My only slight reservation concerning the roof is centred on these opening roof hatches. A very good photograph of 10,202 with these hatches open during maintenance would seem to suggest that a little bit more depth of relief is needed on the model than is given here. But again, this is a very small matter and one which will certainly be enhanced by some very good weathering. Turning the locomotive over again, and I'm reminded of its weight. This is derived from the solid die cast chassis and the motor which is driving each bogey via drive shafts in a gear tower. And there really seems to be some quite interesting and unique design innovation taking place here, in what I can only really describe as a kind of floating bogey within a bogey. We have the pony truck is attached to the outer frames of the bogey, but the inner driving wheels move quite independently. Presumably this is to help it negotiate curves much more successfully and to help the locomotive just remain on the track. The buffers are very nicely modelled, although I was a little surprised to find that they're not spring loaded, as we might expect on such a high spec locomotive. The rest of the front face of the locomotive has other details fitted, such as the vacuum pipe, steam heating pipe and there's a socket to fit the the coupling 
We've got separately fitted windscreen wipers. And of course, the most prominent feature perhaps being the head code discs, which are all shown in the open position. And these are all illuminated with LEDs. The parts pack contains blanking discs so that you can come up with your own head code configuration. And the cab also has uh, lighting fitted as well. So that more or less sums up the physical characteristics of this locomotive. So let's get it out onto the track now and see what it sounds like. As I've mentioned earlier, I've gone for the sound fitted version of this locomotive and the sounds come supplied by Lego Man Biffo, who's highly respected in the DCC sound fitting world. So I'll run through the startup process and some of the other sounds which come on the locomotive.
Well, that more or less brings us to the end of this review of the Kerno Model Rail Centre prototype diesel 10201. And we'll conclude as we watch it prepare to back up onto a set of Bullied and Maunsell coaching stock, some of it weathered and some of it unweathered at the moment. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and bye for now.